How's it going guys and Fraser? Welcome to the party! So I was just recently challenged by Nintendo Hodge about a top five nostalgic games that you know mean something to me that I really enjoy. So this was a lot harder than I thought it would be because there's a lot of games that I like but the problem is a lot of them are newer ones. So I really really took my time to think this one out. So I thought, hmm and thought, hmm, and thought, hmm, and I finally came up with five games that are my top five nostalgic games. They're not going to be in really any order, and I'll kind of explain why I like them as the list goes on. So number five is Gyromite on the NES. It was actually one of the very first games I ever played for that system. My dad came home and he got me the Rob um, action pack which had Rob, the NES, two controllers, Mario, Duck Hunt, and Gyromite. And I really enjoyed that game because it was a game that me and my dad played together a lot. So one person controlled like a little scientist bald Mario dude and you'd run through the level and have to collect things and disarm the bombs while there's things that would, you know, get in his way or attack him. And then the other dude, well, the other player, would control these pillars, like blue and red pillars that would make him go up or down to help the uh, player number one make his way through the stage. Now, when I played with my dad, he would always help me and, you know, things would go really, really well. But when I was playing number two with my dad, gee, because I was a dick. I was a horrible kid just because I loved the sound it made when you crushed... <laughs> when when the pillars crushed the player one, just yeah, I don't know why it just made me laugh, and it's still to this day when I play it, it makes me giggle. So hold on, let me just see if I can find that sound effect for you right right now. Perfect. Game number four, Claymates on the SNES. This game I never owned when I was a kid. It was one of those ones that I always used to rent all the time just because it was a fun game for me. It's a side-scrolling platformer. Um, pretty much is you're a little ball of clay and when you get other balls of clay you turn into di different animals to help you accomplish things. And I'm pretty sure it's a cat, a rat, a fish, a duck, and a gopher. I'm pretty sure but I haven't played the game in a while. I did actually get that game in that big SNES grab that I got. So that's going to be coming up on the channel in a Let's Play. Or a date night sometime soon, because I think Ashley would really like this game. But for the most part, it is a basic game. There's nothing... You know, it's not an amazing game, but it just... When I was a kid, it really, really... Became a quick favorite that I would love to play all the time. Number three... Pokemon Red for the Game Boy. Uh, I loved the Pokemon series. There's no way hiding or getting around that. Um, I played through not every color, but Pokemon Red was my very first playthrough of that game. And actually, Seth, who plays Pokemon Fire Red with us on the channel, he had Pokemon Blue. So when we were growing up, he was my trade buddy. You had to buy that freaking like thirty dollar um, connection cable so you could make the connection between the Game Boys, so that you could make the trades and evolve your certain Pokemon further and further. But I don't know why Pokemon was such a game that really. Um, like, just hit a ho hit home with, like, the, the young Fraser, but there's something about defeating other players with your weird monsters and watching them evolve and kind of making them the way you like them, it's, you know, like, picking the moves and stuff like that, that just, it was really fun, and I'm looking forward to the new Pokemon Day and Night or Moon and Sun or whatever that one may be, but I'm looking forward to trying that one out as well. Number two. Now I'm not sure if I'm breaking the rules for this one or not, because not only am I giving you two games for the price of one for spot number two, they're also not console, or not originally on console, they're arcade games, like you'd actually have to go down to your arcade and play them. These games really, really hit home with me when I used to go, I was sitting here like thinking over the list of what games I had a lot of fun with, and I still have a lot of fun with playing now. and. These two games kept popping up in my head, so I'm sorry if I'm breaking the rules, but here are my two games for spot number two. 
Virtualon. What is there not to love about Virtualon? It's you get a second player, you sit in these awesome chairs, and you have two joysticks, and you just... You're two robots having to kill each other on a stage. It is so much fun. I've tried playing it when they did the port over on Xbox 360, and without having that giant arcade system with the big clunky controllers and the awkward seats, it just, it wasn't the same. Even like it had a divider so you couldn't see what the other player was doing. Oh, the graphics were like basic. They were, po <laughs> they were like polygrammed and they were just like diamonds and stuff like that. But the gameplay was just so much fun. So for number two and a half or 1.5, whatever this one is, part one of number two is Virtual Launch. Now for the other half of number two is X-Men the Arcade Game. I loved this game. The fact that you could have six players just join in at any time. I found when we first started playing this game over at Woodbine Mall, people would actually come and put quarters on the actual arcade to pretty much wait their turn when someone dies so you could come in and pick another character. Um, nothing is more fun to me than like, like a massive multiplayer game. And for an arcade at the time, this game was crazy! You could pick your favorite X-Men, well, not your favorite X-Men, but six X-Men, and then you'd go on a, a platform adventure and try to beat Magneto and kill everybody and... I guess prove that mutants aren't violent by being violent. Yes! But the game itself was a lot of fun. I ranked a lot of hours at that arcade system, and I don't know, whenever I think of a fun multiplayer game, that one keeps popping up in my head. So that is my other half to number two. Number one! Now for those of you that know anything about me at all, you already know what my number one is. It's Turtles in Time on the SNES. I have played through that game so many times that I know what the characters are going to say. As you saw in the playthrough I did with Ashley, I know what bosses are next. I know what to do in the game itself. That, to me, is nostalgic gaming at its finest. I'm a huge turtle fan. I have a turtle carabiner for my keys. I have the giant turtle glass that you saw that I drink uh, my water out of. And then I have tons of Ninja Turtle stuff all around. I'm a huge Ninja Turtle fan. And for that reason alone, that game is my number one. Damn you, Hodge, for challenging me! This was so hard! Trying to narrow down a list of five games that felt nostalgic to you and like, made you just happy when you played them or happy when you remember them or just a sound brings you back to that game was so damn hard. Which is why I gave you six. Well, yeah, six. Just because I couldn't narrow it down any further than that. Like, there's so many games that got left out, like N64 wrestling games, like other platformers on the SNES, even some NES games. It's just, I'm not going to name them because that's just going to make the video go on and on and on and on. So, I'm going to get right down to the nitty gritty right now. I'm going to challenge two people to do this video. So, pretty much, you have until the end of tomorrow to do this or the world will explode. I actually don't know how long your timeline is. You could take a month, you could take two months. Honestly, I'm just challenging you because I'd love to see what you guys pick. If you've already been challenged, I'm sorry. If not, I look forward to seeing your video. So, for my... Person number one that I'm challenging is actually a friend that I stream with and play GTA 5 with. I am challenging Cletus McSquizzy just to give me his top five nostalgic games. I would love to see what games, you know, tug on the old heartstrings. And then the second person I'm challenging is Deggy13. I want to see what games, you know, hit home for you. I want to see what systems are your nostalgic games on. So I look forward to seeing your video if you haven't been challenged yet. And this also kind of give me a little bit of, uh, I don't know, an insider look into what you might be picking at the uh, Waterloo Game Swap to win the best deal challenge. You know, kind of giving me a little hint to try and defeat you. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. You know, I'll make some more. I'm not going to do a pickup video just yet because this weekend, the long weekend, I'm going out with Miles from Flock and Earth and Chris Hodgson from Nintendo Hodge, or Nintendo Hodge himself, and we are going garage sailing and pretty much game hunting. So there's going to be a video on that. And then the week after that, 
we have the Waterloo Game Exchange, or the Waterloo Game Swap. So my pickup videos are going to be condensed into those two. I'm trying to only do one or two pickup videos a month, just so that it's one bigger video as opposed to four or five small, smaller ones. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye